Do you want to add slick branded animation intros to your videos? Maybe something like this? I'm Logan from Music for Makers, a stock music website designed for creative people like you. And in this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a simple logo animation. Don't worry, you don't need any experience with Adobe After Effects or some other complicated animation software. In fact, this method uses a program that you probably already know and use, Keynote, a free presentation tool for Mac. That does mean this tutorial may not be that useful if you don't own a Mac. However, you could replicate the project more or less using Keynote for iPad or iPhone. Here's what you can expect to create today. So Joe's Cafe is a fictional brand that I'm using for this tutorial, but feel free to customize the animation based on your own brand. One last thing, don't forget to grab the project file. It's in the blog post that accompanies this video. I'll put the link over here and then it's also going to be in the description below. All right, let's get started. First, we'll open up Keynote and select wide and then pick the white theme. Now you more than likely already have a logo to use, but just for the, the purposes of showing what all you can do in Keynote, I'm actually going to create the coffee mug logo within Keynote using shapes. I'll zoom out a little bit to see everything and then we can go ahead and delete the, the preloaded text there. So then we'll click shape and let's do a rounded rectangle shape. Now let's go ahead and clear the, the presets here. So we want it to just be a no fill image, but we will add a border and we'll make that 15 points. And then go ahead and also remove the drop shadow. Next we'll go up and click arrange. And here we'll make the size 245 and just make it a square. And let's change that corner to uh, 110 points. So that'll give us kind of a more, not quite a circle, but pretty close. And then we'll just move that over here. Let's go ahead and add another rectangle. And this one we're just going to use to block out part of the first shape. So let's go ahead and make it a little longer. We'll position it a little past halfway on that first shape. And then we'll fill in the background with white and then again remove that drop shadow. Okay, so now you have kind of a U shape here. And let's zoom in a little bit so we can see a little bit better. So next we'll need to add the top of the cup, so we'll just select the line. Go ahead and add, make that horizontal. And to match we'll make that 15 points. And then you may have to play with this part a little bit to get the alignment correct. And once you get it, you have more or less a cup shape. So next we're going to create the handle. So for this we're going to use the draw with pin tool. And basically you want to click once and then click again. And when you click the second time, hold, hold the click and drag it to get kind of a curved shape. And then double click again to close out that shape. And then you can kind of adjust the, the angle or the arch, the degree of the arch to make it kind of you know, what you would think of as a coffee mug handle. So once you think you have something you like, you can just drag it over and lay it on top of the existing shape and then there you go, you have a, a little mug there. So next, let's duplicate that first shape. And you want to remove the border and then add a fill, a color fill. So we're gonna use one that's actually called Mocha. So there is the coffee. Make sure it fits here. Go ahead and put it into position. And then send it to back so that you see the lines again from the cup. Next, let's go ahead and copy and paste that white rectangle that we used earlier. And let's kind of lower it a little bit and then send it to the back and then once again send the coffee to the back. So that gives us a little space it makes it look like you know there's a little space in the coffee cup. So next we're going to group all of the coffee mug elements together so that we can animate them as one. Once you've done that, click the mug and drag it all the way off your slide to the right. Then go ahead and rotate it. Let's say we'll go ahead and rotate it at about 340 degrees.
and then go ahead and click animate. And we're going to add a, an action animation. So you say add an effect and then move. And you see this, and you're, gonna, you're going to drag the kind of ghosted version of the mug. You're going to drag it over onto the slide. And we're also going to go back to format and then rotate, and we're gonna rotate it back to zero degrees so that it's level again. So on the action panel, let's go ahead and click preview just to see what the animation will basically look like. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's what we want, so we can move on to the next step. Let's add another line. This is going to be kind of an animated underline for the logo type. So we'll kind of position it right here, and, and again, we'll, you know, we'll kind of manipulate and tweak this as we go. But let's go ahead and make it 15 points like all the other lines. And then let's add a shape. Let's just copy and paste that one shape. And this is, we're gonna put this here to kind of add a little more visual interest and allow the text to overlay the line a little bit. Next, we're going to add a piece of text, and this is actually going to be for the logo. Again, for this tutorial, we're using the fictional brand Joe's Cafe. At this point, you could enter in your own brand if you like. And then I'm actually going to use a font that I downloaded from Google Fonts called Cops or Copes. I'm not actually sure how you say it, um, but I, I really like this font. I think it looks good in this design. So you can download that or you can just use another serif font if you like. And we're going to position that again so that the J is kind of dropping through that gap in the line. And then I think I want to make this line a little longer, about there maybe. And now we're going to animate the line. So let's click it and go back to animate, build in this time, or say add an effect, and we're going to use the wipe effect. And as you can see, you saw a preview there. We're going to make it a little bit faster so it's a little snappier looking. All right, that looks pretty good. And now we need to add an effect to the coffee liquid. We're actually going to use the same effect, wipe, but this time we're going to change the direction from the bottom so it looks like it's filling up. Next, let's go ahead and add the steam marks. And for that, you're going to click once. On your second click, hold and drag and, and pull it a little bit so that it ends up being a little curved. Click again and do the same thing, so you kind of have an S curve there, and then double click to close that out. So now we have kind of an S shape that you know represents the steam. And then you can just go ahead and move it around until it kind of looks the way you want it to. You can resize it, scale it. And then if you want to edit it, you can actually double click and move the different anchors there so that you can change the, the way the shape actually looks. Now let's copy and paste that same shape and we're going to duplicate it but make it a little bigger. And so this is going to be the second piece that kind of helps represent the steam look. And you may want to rotate things, basically just play with these different settings until you get a look that you like. Now let's select both of these and move them over above where the coffee cup will be. And we'll go over to, we'll select the first one and go ahead and animate it. So we're going to do build in, add an effect, and again we're going to do the wipe from the bottom. So this will look like steam is rising up from the cup. And then let's add another effect to the other one. And let's do the same thing to the second one, but let's make the time a little shorter so that they'll be kind of staggered when they animate together. Again, this will just kind of give it a more natural, organic look. Now let's go ahead and animate the text. So we'll select the text and as build in, we'll select the typewriter effect and change the time, the duration, we'll change it to 0.7 seconds. Then let's click build order so that we can arrange all of these animations and, and make the whole animation look and work the way we want it to. Oh, I almost forgot. We're actually going to add a third animation to that cup and it's going to be pop. So go ahead and open up the animate action panel again and select add action and then pop. And then we can set the scale to 110%, so it's a little, a little subtle. Okay, now let's go back to build order. And let's see, pop is in there now. We're gonna make that after build two. So after it slides in, it'll pop. 
Then let's make the line slide in with that pop animation and shortly after we'll have the text type. Next we want the coffee to look like it's being poured in so we'll add that next after Bill 5. And then we want the two steam marks to follow after, right? And then we'll actually make the second steam mark start with build 7, but we'll delay it by 0.1 seconds. So then we'll click preview and see how the animation looks. Oops, uh, it looks like I forgot to send this one shape to the back. I don't know if you saw that on the slide in, but that shape needs to go back a few layers. So let's go ahead and click that and say send to back. And now you can see that the line actually covers up part of the J again. So we'll need to click the line and send it to the very back. So let's zoom back out, open up build order, and let's preview that animation. Okay, that looks pretty good, but I actually think I have the animations a little bit out of order. It looks like we need to, it looks like we need to have the line slide in after the text is typed. So let's go back to build order and move Joe's Cafe above number four line. And say, let's do that with group three and make sure the line is after group four. Looks like everything is good. We'll preview again. And yeah, that's, that's the effect that we want right there. So again, you may just want to play with the different settings and the general composition until it looks the way you want it to. So I'm just trying to kind of center things here and just give it a more balanced composition. And I feel pretty good about the way that looks now. So once you've got the animation the way you want it, you need to export it. But actually first, and we should have done this at the very beginning, so I apologize, I actually just forgot. But you want to go to Document up there in the top right. And then under Slide Size, go to Custom Slide Size and make sure that this is 1920 by 1080. And then let's also change the presentation type to Self Playing and set the Builds Delay to zero and the Transitions Delay to three. All right, let's go ahead and click Play to see what it looks like. All right, I think we're finished. I think that looks pretty good. So let's go to File, Export, QuickTime, and these settings look fine to me. If you want to, again, that three seconds is how long it'll stay on the last frame. And then if you want to change, I like to change the resolution to 1080p, it's just more flexible. And then go ahead and save that as whatever you like, whatever name. I'll say Joe's Intro, say Export. Now once you export this, you can pull it into your video editor, whether that's iMovie or Premiere Pro or, or anything like that, you simply pull it in and then you'll drag it into your timeline wherever you want it, probably near the beginning of your video. And we'll go to the desktop and look, there it is. So we'll click it, preview it, and it looks pretty great. So we're finished. Congratulations on your new animation. If this tutorial was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Happy animating!